morning, my brothers and sisters. Welcome to episode 119 in the book of Genesis. Today we're going to uh, learn about Isaac's son Jacob and something amazing is going to happen with him. So listen in here. This is from Genesis chapter 28. Then Isaac called Jacob and blessed him and directed him. You must not take away from the Canaanite women. Arise, go to Paddan Aram, to the house of Bethuel, your mother's father. In other words, your grandfather. And take as a wife from there one of the daughters of Laban, your mother's brother. God Almighty, bless you and make you fruitful and multiply you that you may become a company of peoples. Then he gave the blessing of Abraham. May he give the blessing of Abraham to you. So he's looking from the generation before, then his generation, and now, now Jacob is the next generation. May he give the blessing of Abraham to you and your offspring with you, that you may take possession of the land of your sojournings that God gave to Abraham. And thus Isaac sent Jacob away. And he went to Paddan Aram to Laban, the son of Bethuel, the Aramean, the brother of Rebekah, Jacob's and Esau's mother. All right, so here's the context is Jacob has been very bad. He's been deceived by, a, he has deceived his brother and he has deceived uh, Isaac. And your brother, you're in a situation right now where your brother literally wants to kill you. So much so that he actually takes comfort in the thought of murdering you as soon as I, Isaac, am dead. So Isaac has this idea, go to your mother, mother's father's house, your grandfather's on your mother's side, and get a wife there. I did it, and it worked for me, and that was, that was Rachel, who ended up being your mother. All right. So Esau, here's wind of this now, verse 6. Now Esau saw that Isaac had blessed Jacob and sent him away to Paddan Aram to take a wife from there, and that he blessed him as he directed him. And then here's the quote. You must not take a wife from the Canaanite woman. And that Jacob had obeyed his father and mother and gone to Paddan Aram. So when Esau saw the Canaanite women did not please Isaac, his father, he did exactly that. Esau went to Ishmael and took as his wife, besides the wife he has, Mathalah, the daughter of Ishmael, Abraham's son, the sister of Nebaioth. So uh, Esau says, whatever you do, do not marry the pagan woman. Don't do that. You know, don't marry somebody who doesn't follow the Lord. Don't marry someone who worships uh, God that's that's wrong. And when Esau hears this, he, he hears his parents' concern over the issue. He knows exactly what he's going to do, which is exactly the opposite. It's a classic. He says, I know this will make mom and dad mad. And specifically and deliberately, he does exactly that. All right, so here's the title for today is The Deceiver Has Been Deceived. Here's where that comes from. This is, I'm going to read you an amazing passage from Jacob's dream. It starts in verse 10, that Jacob left Beersheba, and he does this 500-mile trip. He's on his way, and he came to a certain place and stayed there that night because the sun had set. And taking one of the stones of the place, he put it under his head and lay down in that place to sleep. So he's got a rock for a pillow. Verse 12, and he dreamed, and behold, there was a ladder set up on the earth. And the top of it reached to heaven. So there's this connection. And behold, the angels of God were ascending and descending on this ladder. And behold, the Lord stood above it and said, I am the Lord, the God of Abraham, your father, and the God of Isaac. The land on which you lie, I will give to you and your offspring. Your offspring shall be like the dust of the earth. And you shall spread abroad to the west and to the east and north and to the south. And in you and in your offspring shall all the families of earth shall be blessed. Behold, I am with you and will keep you wherever you go and will bring you back to this land. For I will not leave you until I have done with you what I promised. Then Jacob awoke from his sleep and said, Surely the Lord is in this place and I did not know it. And he was afraid and said, How awesome is this place. This is none other than the house of God. This is the gate of heaven. So this is one of the wow verses of the Bible. When I read it this morning, that's exactly what I said. So Jacob has, been, has referred to the Lord God Almighty as somebody else's God. So when he was deceiving his father, he said, 
because the Lord, your God, has granted me success in getting this game. So he actually lies, he uses the name of the Lord in a deceitful way. Um, so he keeps on being this deceiver. So he's this deceiver, he's a blessing stealer, he's deceitful, he's not true. And I, he, he basically says, I don't believe that God is here. I don't believe that God is there. And he might even mock others like his father and his mother for their simplistic, ignorant uh, beliefs. I see and maybe admire others, that's another choice he could have, for their misplaced faith, for my father Isaac, my, my grandfather Abraham, maybe others of the clan. So others who have been circumcised of the flesh and maybe circumcised of the heart. So he, he might be saying, I know that this faith means something for others, and maybe even I respect them for it. I, I don't think he does really does. But he's been operating in this world where God may be, hey, good for you, but means nothing to me. And I know there's Christians, and I like what they've done in the past. I like that they've expunged slavery and started at every hospital and cared for the least and treated neighbors as they would like to be treated and they fought against evil but you know it's not really for me these people christians are the ones that are being deceived believers in god they're the one that are being deceived and then he goes to sleep and then he realized jacob the deceiver realizes that all along he has been the one that is deceived he's the one that has been deceived into believing that God does not exist. And now today he gets this revelation literally from God in a dream. The Lord is here. I didn't know it. There's angels. There's a God. He's here. He's working. He's active. And his response, of course, is afraid. He's here. This is above my pay grade. He is awesome and he's big. And if this is all so, then I have mistreated the Lord with my unbelief. I have done wrong and I should be held accountable. And this is something big, big, big is happening here. And I'm slow on the uptake. And so he kind of repents. He says, I didn't know. I'm sorry. I'm wrong. I have, been, I have been deceived. I deceived myself in a world where rather than, hey, I have a relative that's Christian. Now I know that God is real. He is here. He's active. And he demands right thinking for me. The deceiver has been deceived all along. He finds out that God's real. Thanks for listening.